Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined by Justin Ashley, of course, uh, from Justin Ashley Racing. Uh, and, of course, the winner of the 2022 U- no, U- Winter Nationals, hopefully the U.S. Nationals. I caught myself there. Um, how's it going, man? Good. Thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. We, uh, we kicked off the season in style. Uh, got a win at the Winter Nationals, so we're feeling pretty good headed into Phoenix this weekend. Yeah, it's uh, you guys go right back at it from from uh, from Pomona, of course, where of course where the season begins and ends, and then of course you guys are going off to Phoenix this weekend. Um, talking about this, talking about this weekend, how do you feel like you're gonna do um, with the momentum that you guys have from from Pomona? Yeah, we feel great. I mean, we were in Phoenix just a few weeks ago testing, and uh, we were really happy with the numbers that we put up. We had a few early shutoff runs, but we got the early numbers that we were looking for. And then moving into Pomona, obviously, last weekend, from the time we unloaded the car uh, to the time the race was over, our Phillips Connect Toyota Top Fuel Dragster Power by Vita C-Shot was just mean and lean all weekend long, and that's how we want it. So we feel really good uh, heading into Phoenix. We have all that momentum we're carrying forward with us, but nonetheless, uh, Pomona is in the past. This is the toughest top fuel field in a decade. Nothing is easy. Qualifying in and of itself is going to be difficult. So we have uh, completely shifted our focus over to Phoenix now that Pomona is behind us and we're ready to put our best foot forward there. You haven't been to Phoenix in a little bit. So uh, what's it going to be like to go there? I mean, what is every track different? I mean, I mean, you're just it's just literally like, it's not like, you know, IndyCar or NASCAR or IMSA or anything like that. What are, what, how different are these tracks when you go to NHRA? Yeah, that's an awesome question. So something that I learned, uh, you know, really in my first few years of professional is each track has its own little intricacies, right? So they're all relatively similar, but certain tracks uh, might have a bump in it. Other tracks might be really smooth until the 660 and then get loose at the top end. Um, you know, let's take Bristol, for example. I love Bristol. It's one of my favorite tracks, but the way Bristol's been over the last few years, it's been extraordinarily bumpy past the eighth mile. And as you cross the finish line, you can feel it in a top fuel car. You feel the car moving around, but you would really feel it in a funny car. So each track is a little bit different. Phoenix in and of itself is a really nice track, a really nice facility. Uh, I've only actually raced there professionally once. I've tested there a few times. We, uh, race there had relative success the race before the pandemic hit in 2020 and this will be our first time back uh last time I was there it was packed with fans and i think that they're going to pack it out again and it's going to be a lot of fun yeah of course i don't know how many hero cards you go through on a daily basis so um it'll be it'll be good to see but yeah of course uh, this is uh this is the first year of your new partnership with uh, with toyota i'm sure they were pretty happy to see you guys getting back in victory lane yeah this was the first Toyota Gazoo North America race in history. And we were able to come out and collect the win. Obviously, this is our first race as a part of Team Toyota, which is an honor in and of itself when you look at the list of drivers that they have. But when you want to talk about high performance, you think about Toyota Gazoo Racing and what they've brought out, that new platform that they've brought out this year. So to be able to be the first one to collect the Wally uh, and represent that brand uh, this weekend in Pomona was really amazing. Just privileged grateful to have the opportunity to work with Toyota and be a part of that family. Yeah. So kind of really looking into uh, what this is, what, what's, what stands out about this racetrack that yeah, I know you haven't been there in a while, but what's kind of stands out about this place? Well, like you said, I mean, we haven't been there in a while, but I'll tell you one thing that stands out is it's a facility that you can go fast that much. I will tell you, Uh, obviously everything is weather dependent, but it's certainly a track that you can go fast and light up the scoreboard. And the way the top fuel field is stacked right now, uh, you know, you could be looking at a situation where if you don't run a low 70, you're certainly not in the top half of the field. That much is for sure. Uh, Especially at a race like Arizona. So I know that if the weather holds up, uh, if we get some overcast there, uh, I think you're going to see plenty of three sixties for the fans. Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Um, on average, how many hero cards do you go through on a daily basis? Because for people that don't know, a lot of people that may not follow NHRA, um, every ticket is a pit pass. So that means you can walk around the garage area and, and that, of course, and you would see basically everybody. It's like a it's like a big scene of people 
at garage areas and obviously, you know, spending most of your time trying to get the car ready to go. You're just about as spending time just, uh, you know, taking pictures with fans, taking some of the, oh, this is uh, showing people the car. Is there something that you do that other drivers maybe don't? What, what, what do you do to like, you know, um, show your thing to fans? Show your car to fans or something. Yeah, I think that's part of what makes NHRA so special, right? Is every ticket is a pit pass. You see 20, 25,000 people over the course of a weekend, sometimes more, uh, just in the pits, literally right up to your pit area, checking out the race car, watching you work uh, on the car itself and, and hearing you warm up the car and get ready to go. I mean, I would probably say I go through anywhere from 500 to 1,000 hero cards over the course of a weekend, uh, which is quite a few autographs. Um, you know, I would say all the drivers really are really good with interacting and engaging with the fans. Uh, you know, we try and spend as much time with them as possible because that's what makes the NHRA community so strong. And I know personally, I value and appreciate the fans uh, just as much as they appreciate us. I mean, you know, one thing I'll try and do every once in a while, uh, if there's a little kid out there, bring him inside, try and stick him in the race car so their parents could take a few pictures. Oh, I think nice. that's something really special that, um, you know, depending on how busy the day gets and what we got going on that I really try and go out of my way to make happen because I was that kid one day and, uh, just to know that, you know, from a parent's perspective, you're really putting a, a smile on a kid's face at the end of the day. That's really what it's all about. Yeah. So, um, this weekend, I know we, you talked about the, the if you followed NHRA racing for a long time, you would know that, you know, there's pretty much really hasn't changed um, in the past few years. Not this year. There is a ton of change. Of course, you know, your team, um, of course, um, you know, Antron has his own team. You look at uh, the Tony Stewart team with Leah. You have Don Schumacher with Tony. Of course, you have Brittany Force, you have the Coletta cars, you have Steve Torrance, um, Clay, um, the Terry McMillan's coming back. Um, did I miss anybody? <laughs> uh, I mean, listen, it is just stacked, right? Austin yeah. Proc, Tony Schumacher, Josh Hart. Those are the three cars that you think that are coming back and running full time. Yeah. Hart ran a part time schedule last year. He'll be on full time this year. Then you have part time guys like Buddy Hull, like Krista Baldwin, like Doug Foley, Ron August. Um, the list goes on and on. Scott Farley. These are guys that can win any race they attend. Trip Tatum is a guy. Billy Torrance is a guy that doesn't even come to every race that can win any race he's at. Yeah, so absolutely. it's going to be tough to uh, qualify for a race. It's going to be tough to qualify for a countdown, especially when it comes championship time. So the field is just stacked. So from our team's perspective, we have to focus on Phillips connect. We have to focus on Vita C shot. We have to focus on ourselves and building our program out and doing the very best job that we can and not worry about any external circumstances or any other teams or drivers that's going to put us in the best position to win. And, you know, it's, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's going to take some time, but we want to be in championship contention at the end of the year. All right. Well, Justin Ashley, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. Good luck this weekend at uh, Arizona. Thank you, Casey. I appreciate you having me on. You have a good week.